Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm very excited because I got into the closed preview for JetBrains Fleet, a new ID coming out from JetBrains, the company who makes Rider, IntelliJ and some of the best IDs actually out there for almost any major programming language. Now Fleet is actually a very interesting product because it tries to compete with VS Code and we'll see that in a second. But also, I think if handled correctly, it can be way more just because of all that pre-existing knowledge JetBrains has on making IDs. And you'll see why this is important in a second. Now, because we have quite a few things to talk about and because I do have a live demo of the product as well, let's go straight into the code. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. And for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. So before I show you anything here, I'm going to go to the website, the landing page for Fleet, and let's talk about it for a second. So right out of the get-go, Fleet advertises itself as an ID. It's not a code editor, it's not a text editor, it is an ID, integrated development environment. And that's important because VS Code can be turned into something resembling an ID, or even an ID to be honest, um, but it's not really that is just an amalgamation of all the extensions that you added to make it do what you want. But JetBrains has all these IDs and they work in this front and back end logic where the back end can is external and can run anywhere. And ultimately, Fleet can use those back ends and all that code analysis technology and refactorings and everything to be one ID to rule them all, to, to basically have support for all of this. And that's very exciting to me because I'm writing more than one language and usually what I have to do is I open like three or four IDs when I'm working on, on multiple things. One for Java and then Kotlin. IntelliJ, I installed the Rust plugin. I might have Rider and then for some very lightweight code editing stuff, I have VS Code as well. So quite a few things. If I can bring all those together to one ID, that's very useful to me. Now you see that they're trying to showcase the collaboration capabilities of Fleet with five people collaborating on the same code base, and that's interesting. But this is to me the selling point. 20 years of experience developing IDs. They know what's up. They make some of the best IDs out there. In fact, Google built um, Android Studio on top of IntelliJ, the platform. So. Clearly, they know what they're doing. In my opinion, Rider is better than uh, VS as well. Yes, VS 2022 as well. And here are the like four selling points that I think are very interesting. First, it is very lightweight. And even in this very early stage, actually, it's very snappy and can turn into a very smart ID. We'll see that in a second, by the way. It can also be distributed. Like I said, that backend can run anywhere. So it can be a remote machine, Space, which is another offering they have, uh, Docker, cloud, anywhere. And you can collaborate with multiple people on the same code base. And then look at all that language support right out of the box. This is not just extensions made by third parties or Microsoft, but instead it's by people who already have insanely good code analysis and refactorings for all of these languages. So if I was to put my money somewhere to do like a polyglot ID, right, that's where I would do that. By the way, I should mention, I'm not sponsored by JetBrains, um, I wish, uh, but I'm not. And then you have the, the fleet offering running in space, which we, we might have some time to take a look at, but effectively your code is running somewhere in the Docker container in the cloud and you're working on it. And even if you have like a very bad laptop, all the processing happens out of your PC. So um, it will be very snappy as long as you have a good internet connection and then a bunch of other things. And this is the selling point for me plugins, if they nail that, I think they have a very good chance to dethroning VS Code. But with all that said, let's go into Fleet, the product itself. And what I have here is a Java project. And I can expand the main application and all it really does is it prints Hello Fleet. Now, here's the thing. This is just code. There is no analysis going on. This is just a text editor. Like even if I force a suggestion, it doesn't really have any context. It is just like VS code without any of the analysis by default. But here's the kicker. Yes, it's a very snappy and like fast code editing thing if you don't need code analysis, but look at this button up here. Smart mode is off. If I turn this on and this supports currently Java, Kotlin and Rust in the version I have, and I click enable, 
Watch what happens. Do you, do you see that? It's, a, it's an ID now. Like, look at this. I can say sys anything, and I have proper Java suggestions. What? Like, system out. I can properly build an application here. I can have my tests, Gradle, everything works. And if I open the actions menu, I can do stuff like, I don't know, attach folder or attach to process, or I can go to a specific file or symbol in the file, or I can open a tool like the, the Git window, which is over here, for example, or the history if I need to. Or I can even do a full text search. So let's say app, it will search everywhere for the text app and you see how fast and snappy it is. It is what you'd expect by a JetBrains product at this point. So it's very cool. I can run it over here if I want to. But like I said before, I can also say up here, I can have configurations and I have a couple of them here. I have Gradle run and Gradle run on debug mode. So we're going to see them here. So I'm going to say um, Gradle and I can have all the commands as well here. It's, it's all very contextual, but let's say um, Gradle run. Very snappy, very fast. Sorry, I shouldn't click that. Hello fleet. It just printed it like this. And if I want to debug, I can go here, let's close that, and I can say Gradle run debug, debug this, and the debugger is going to start hitting the breakpoint, and I can work properly in here with the JetBrains debug experience. So you can see arguments, I can add a watch if I want to uh, for a specific uh, variable, I can do anything I want. It's it's getting there, not, not everything is included yet, uh, but I think they're heading towards the right direction. And I can stop, start, work, all that works fine. And I can close that window as well when I don't need to. And you have this like multi-snapping thing where I can take that and put it here, or put it here, very Visual Studio Cody. But you get the point, it, it all works. But now here's another thing. I'm gonna show you two things first. Let's say I wanna open a folder as a, as a new like working directory. I can go file, open, and I can say just fleet. And I have a Java test folder. Let's play. Let's let's click enter. It's open. That's it. Obviously, it doesn't remember my font settings at this point, but I have opened this so far, so snappy. It it's really really cool. Now let's say I want to attach a new folder here. Let's say I want to do some Rust development because everyone says Rust is amazing, right? I double click the wrong thing. So let's go back here and attach again, and attach it. And now I have my Java project up here, as you can see, but I can collapse that and I have my Rust code down here. And this is just uh, a Rust API type of thing. So I can go here and say run Rust and Rust is now running. The API is running. I can hit it at port 8080 and the hello port or the hello path will give me hello world from Rust. So if I go to Postman and I click that hello world from Rust. So Rust is running now in here and I have full refactorings, full everything here. I can say dot listen, bind, into respond. Even on Rust, everything works on the same ID that, you know, I can do Java development and I don't have to open 15 different things and consistent key bindings, consistent everything. I can also use refactorings. So let's say hello fleet should be an extracted variable. I can do that. Hello fleet text goes here. Very easy, very snappy. This is the whole point. The fact that I can have everything in a single ID and still have a very good experience. To me, that's a very nice selling point. And what I want to show you is the space dev environment. So here I have a fleet experiment dev environment and I have cloned uh, the Kator samples directory. And as you can see, I can click in here and I can see a bunch of things for my project, but I can also click that button called open ID. And this is a four CPU seven um, gigabytes of RAM and 40 uh, gigabytes of disk space on the cloud, not on my PC. And when I click open ID and this will open fleet now. Um, and as you can see, fleet is already open over here. Let's make this bigger um, and move it at the top. Here we go. Now what you see here is not locally on my machine. It is on the cloud. So a smart mode is enabled remotely on a remote workspace. And I can go and do whatever I want with this code. I can go and look at Kotlin code. And if I want to edit it, I can. 
if I want to go like to some front end code, here it is. Like I can do whatever I want and I can find usages, you know, proper things you would do if you were doing remote desktop development. It warns me I don't need that. So let's remove redundant semicolon, save, and I can go on Git. I have full Git support here. I can see the history of the project and I can see all the differences. There's plenty of good stuff here already. And I think it's going to get just better as the time goes by. And just to prove that this is not on my PC, if I do attach folder, you see that this goes like root. This is, you know, the Linux file structure. This isn't a Docker container somewhere. It's not here. In any case, my point is that there's plenty of good stuff here and there's very solid foundation. And if they can nail all the refactorings and the code analysis and everything and iron out all that logic and have it like consistent across everything within that ID, this can be a very good selling point because they will obviously have, I assume, a commercial license for this. But if they can sell you fleet and that's it, and then you have five IDs in the price of one, that's a good deal. So I think that's going to be the selling point. I want to see how plugins go. I want to see maybe if there's going to be like a free tier so it can compete with Visual Studio because this is not open source, obviously, and I don't think it will be. So there's still plenty of unknowns, but I'm very excited to see where this goes. Like, it's very interesting that like even stuff like that, like let's say I have mute here while this is not a mutable thing. I can remove the keyword and I can rename require like there's good stuff here. I can go to definition and you have all the source code. It's it's good. It's good. Anyway, you get the point. It's an interesting project. Sign up for the early access. I think they actually can't accept anyone else right now for signups. They got like 80k signups very quickly. But keep an eye on this. This might be a game changer. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.